So this talk is about connecting MySQL and Python. I think this is the only talk about Python in this conference. I sneaked it in, so that's good. Uh, my name is Geert van der Keel. I'm a, support, a MySQL support engineer, one of the original ones. So I came with the whole baggage. So. And if my voice goes away, you know why. And this is your squirrel. <laughs> you guys know everything about Python, yes? Who is new to Python? Oh, 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 okay, cool. So, I'm also new to Python for a couple of years now. So I'm always learning, so it's always good. And that's why I actually developed also Connected Python, and that's what we see later, just to learn. Um, Lots of people don't know what Python is. It's not about you know, the series Monty Python. It's about the series Monty Python. It's not about the snake. That's why I put the scroll there. So Python is about software quality. It's about being portable between uh, operating systems. It comes with a huge standard library, which you know everything is included when you install it. It's pretty cool, and it's object-oriented. Um, what lots of people don't know is that there are lots of uh, there are a few implementations of Python. So the, what, the usual stuff is Python itself, and that's actually called C Python. This is the one that implemented in NCC. This is the one that comes with most operating systems, uh, mostly Linux and, and BSDs and all that stuff, and also Mac, because Microsoft didn't uh, put it on the Windows version yet. Of that. But there are lots of uh, more than just this uh, C Python version. So you, always, you also have JPython. JPy. This one is written in Java. And I'm just mentioning this because you can actually use Connect to J uh, using Python. So that's pretty cool. Similarly, you have also Iron Python. This one is written in .NET. So JPython and um, JTON, JPython, I don't know how you pronounce it really, but uh, JTON and Iron Python um, are actually scripting languages to Java and .NET. If you're like me, if you don't like Java, you can write Java applications in Python. That's pretty nice. Okay. A few things about MySQL which are important for programming Python, which I think are important to Python. If you have any others, you can just uh, share it with us. Um, you should use character sets, you should use Unicode. Uh, you can set that through the option character set, char set. So there you can just switch the character set to UTF-8 or Latin 1 or any other which we need. There's also the option use Unicode true, which is important. Um, some connectors you will see have this turned on by default. Just for information, I'm giving a handout of this, this talk. So the slides will also be available there, pretty useless without the talk. So uh, there will be a paper where you can read up and have also put more links and source code and stuff like that. The storage engine, um, it's good to set the default to something else, the one you like, like IMDB. Uh, I'm mentioning this because of the frameworks, which we'll see later on. If you create a table, it's going to be by default my ISM. Usually the, you don't want that, you want to have uh, IMDB. So that's why you can easily set the default en engine to something you like. And this is a configuration parameter in the MySQL server. You can also set it per session, so uh, if, you, if you like to have it uh, per database, set to IMDB, one database, the other one my, my eyes and create tables. But uh, it's, a, it's a useful setting. One of the things in, in MySQL is that there are hidden warnings. And if you use a MySQL client tool, if you do uh, something bad, like inserting a wrong, uh, the wrong 
birthday for your girlfriend and uh, it's somewhere in the Middle Ages or it doesn't, or it's false, it will just give you a warning and insert something default. So MySQL is, is, is not really uh, good in that respect. But there is a use, useful command for this, use, useful um, setting in the CS Cloud mode. If you set it to traditional, if you insert an invalid date, or you insert a string that is too long, it will immediately be uh, exposed as an error, not a warning. So if you use that in, in uh, Python, for example, then you just get an exception. So anyone who is using Python with MySQL, you have other tips you can share with us? No? Okay. So what you can use for connecting MySQL and Python? Good screws, for example, in the kitchen. And then you have the drivers um, which are available. This is my kitchen, by the way, it fell on my head. So it didn't succeed in connecting it to the wall. First one you can use for connecting MySQL and Python is MySQL B. That's the one everyone should know who's using Python. And that's the one who's has been around since uh, years and years. It's you know, almost the default one now. Um, it's also called MySQL for Python. I'm actually re reviewing a book uh, about this. So as you can see, there's a source code. Uh, the first line imports the module. Then you open a connection to the, to the database. You open a cursor and he executes a query. And then you read the rows using the fetch all. That's pretty basic um, code. Why I'm showing this is because you have other drivers, like our SQL, and the source code you, know, you see there down, it's exactly the same. And this is important. So you can just simply switch between uh, drivers whenever you like. So our SQL is just like MySQL DB. It's um, based on the libMySQL client, the, so the C libraries of MySQL. So they're implemented in C. The disadvantage of those two is um, that you need MySQL libraries installed on the machine where you run this, these applications. Uh, the, the big advantage is that they're very fast. Like MySQL B, it's well proven that it works very well. And I think our SQL is going you know, good way. So they are uh, doing good stuff there. And um, yeah, it's also working on my Mac, for example. That's also cool. And now I'm introducing MySQL connected Python. And that's our pure implementation of the MySQL client server protocol in Python. That's something that grew up uh, within Sun. Actually, within my uh, room at home, I was tired of having compiled errors in MySQL DB, and I just decided to write my own interface. <coughs> so that's how it grew. Again, you have the same source code, so you can just simply import uh, the new MySQL Connect for Python and use it just the same. I'll come back to this connector in a few. I'm going to also show the source code because I would like to, uh, you know, get more help uh, developing this, testing this on also multiple platforms. That would be very helpful. <coughs> um, as mentioned earlier, you have also JTON, and you can use Connect J. That's the, our connector. Our GDBC connector, which we are giving, uh, giving away, which we are providing on our, our, our website. So you can write your Java applications using Python. And as you can see, it's uh, just import Java and import the driver manager. The source code is, of course, different. In the handout, you will have an example on how to do that. There's a complete source code on how to do that. Okay, any questions so far? Great. 
break. A bit more about my school of native Python. Um, a few internals. We are currently, well, I'm currently because I'm the only developer right now, um, on version 0.13, and that's still a development version. It works pretty well, so you can just do the common stuff. There are a few problems still that we have to fix, um, and we just need time to do that. But I'm hopeful that this week I'll can release one four, the zero one four development release, and I really hoped to actually release the beta version this in this conference. I did manage, so sorry about that. But you can already use it. There are people actually using it in production, like the guys from Meet TV, the, the TV stuff you can download. They are actually using it, or they are actually checking it out actively. So they are very interested. And I guess the main reason is that you don't have to have MySQL installed any additional software. It's totally independent of anything else except Python. So you just need Python installed and it works. The code is open source, it's GBL version 2, just like anything else in MySQL. Uh, yeah, MySQL. And you can download it from Launchpad uh, at this URL. There's, there are already packages available, so you can just uh, download the package and you can install it. As mentioned before, this is a complete, almost complete implementation of the client server protocol in Python, of course. And just to show off, you know, this is the um, how you um, hash the password and to give it to the MySQL server. This is how I do it. If you guys see performance problems in it, you can just yeah, get back to me so I can optimize it. Um, this is just an example. I'm just putting there. I think it's, it's very good um, to have Python as an example on how the MySQL protocol works. We have documentation, but maybe if you look at the source code, you'll probably learn more. If you learn at the C source code, if you look at the C source code in MySQL, you probably will not figure it out. So you can look at the source code in Python, it's like pseudocode almost, so you can just see how the, how the queries are sent to MySQL, so you can hack yourself. Um, something I decided a while ago is to make one single package for versions, Python versions 2 and 3. So we are supporting 3.1 and uh, I, I think this is the first connector which is actually uh, ready to use for Python 3.1. I'm not sure how far our SQL is right now. Um, you know, So, if you want to use um, MySQL with Python 3.1, uh, you can use Connected Python. It should work. I'm always using the should word. Um, it's, uh, we support Python 2.5 to 3.1. Uh, 2.4 we dropped. It doesn't make sense to support it anymore. Um, it's also difficult to, uh, you know, to, to really support all these changes that are done from 2.4 to 2.5. I'm also thinking actually to completely drop to 5 as well and go directly to 6. Yeah, yeah. so this, there were little changes between 2.5 and 2.6, so it's still okay, but uh, if anyone objects, you know, we have already users who want to have it for two, uh, Python 2.4, but as of the character, yet, we don't do that. Also, um, we don't support MySQL versions um, older than 4.1. So we don't support the old protocols. We don't support old passwords. You have to change, upgrade your MySQL search to that. Because it's, it's way too much work to, to even think about uh, implementing the protocol in Python. It's history, this version. So, um, so it's a single package. I am not going to uh, release a version for Python 2 and Python 3, it doesn't make sense. It will be too much. And uh, how I'm doing it is the setup uh, pi, you know, the, the, the script 
which is installing the, 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 the code, is figuring it out. So it's, figure, it's figuring out which Python version you have and just to install the correct version. So why should I make a package, you know, extra package when the script can figure it out? So that's why I do that. One problem is that sometimes, and that's why I put the um, examples directory in there, uh, on Sunday I had a, uh, somebody contacting me and it didn't work. You know, this is the, the version that he downloaded on Windows didn't work. I gave him the new pre-release and it worked fine. But he was using the examples uh, of uh, Python 2. So you cannot use the examples of Python 2 using Python 3. It's impossible. The source code is not compatible. So that's why the structure is maybe a bit... Um, yeah, maybe I should really make a Py 2K, maybe there. If anyone has an idea to do that. Um, it's a little thing to change, really, but um, yeah. So a single package for both versions. It works on Windows, it works on, Win on Linux, it works on Mac. I guess it works everywhere, so um, it should be fine. This is it's pure Python. This is the, the theme of MySQL. It should be easy to use, it should be simple, it should be straightforward. And it's just download, install, and use. No dependencies, there are no external Python uh, things you have to install. It's all from the standard library. So that's why there's also no support for SSL and stuff like that yet. So I'm not sure if I'll put that in. I'll, put that, I'll leave that to the, to the user. We'll see about that. But I want to make sure that it's working like, like this. That you, you don't have to have anything more installed on the machine. Okay. There's, a, there's, quite some, there's, a, there's a drawback in using connected Python, and that's performance. Nothing beats the MySQL client. Nothing beats MySQL to be in performance right now. Or our, our, our SQL. So, um, both implementations using the, the BitMySQL client are faster. My first test shows that um, connected Python is two times slower. And maybe it's my coding, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And probably I do something wrong. But I think it's just the way Python is. That's um, no way around. But you gain the simplicity of immediately using it. And that's cool. Um, I've been through it myself. I see users on, on, on Stack Overflow or forums always complaining about MySQL DB is not compiling or the binary is not working. I haven't seen too much RSQL stuff still, but uh, it seems to be always a pain to install it. So the performance is, is, is a drawback, but you gain the simplicity. So if you want to start developing a bit, that would be certain. I mean, when you say slow, you're talking about the client part of the overhead. I mean, there's some server latency in any query that's going to be the same. So it depends on if you're running a complicated query, uh, who okay, cares? So, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing is, yeah, I'm, I'm inserting data in my tests, and okay. um, that's just two times slower. So you so just straight inserts? Yeah, and uh, it's a very basic test still. I mean, I'm not okay. really the benchmark right. guy. Okay. Um, but I think it's pretty normal, and I'm not really surprised about that. Yes? We have a requirement to have passwords in a separate file in our source code. And so, I'm asking whether uh, you support that and do not expose it on the network. Okay, so do you, um, in Python scripts, do you need the password in the source code? And can you can you use with connected Python external files to read the password from, like the option file of MySQL, for example? Um, no. So you need the password in the source code right now. It's, it might be a good idea to, to read configuration file to, to have this. I think MySQL V can do that. Um, yes, it can. Just, yeah, in general, just, yeah. So, yeah. It would be possible to implement, but right now you have to have it in the source code. In MySQL DB, uh, is it exposed to the network? 
Um, is, is the password exposed on the network? No. Uh, the hashing happens on the client side. So uh, that's the thing with um, old passwords, for example, in uh, uh, versions earlier than 4.1, MySQL 4.1, password was easily uh, hackable. You can just get it. And uh, that's why old passwords are not supported. But if you sniff the, path, the network, it's never, you know, passwords going through, it's hashed. So if you see the source code you'll, and, and you see something very bad that I'm doing there, or an extra loop too much, or something like that, I improved a lot of stuff in 0.14, which I'm going to release. Um, and it's getting faster and faster, so it's, it's also a learning experience for me, because this is my major, first major project with Python. So it's, it's, uh, so it's a cool product to learn. So a little word about the frameworks. Um, of, of Python. Um, I don't have too much experience myself with those things because uh, I'm not in the business of developing too much. But um, I'm using for personal websites Django. Django. So this is a web framework. And I'm using Connected Python in uh, Django already. Now for more than a year already. So uh, even before Connected Python. That was the reason why I actually wrote the first uh, implementation kind of so I'm trying to push uh, you know, the people there to, to make the backend back to connect to Python inside the Django framework. Who's using this framework? Oh, one hand up. Okay. I think this is now the most popular one, or you know, the one that's now in the spotlight. Um, so you can make it work, but you have to write your own backends. I have one ready, um, and I have another user who is actually making it as well. So there's some activity going on there. And that's important to get bugs out and maybe performance. Um, if you want to connect Django with uh, MySQL, I suggest you have to look at the manual uh, because there's a few points you have to be careful about uh, when you connect to MySQL. And one of them is the default storage engine which I talked about earlier. So um, it will create tables for the default, default storage engine, and that will be my ISM. And you don't want that. You want to have IMDB. The other framework, very popular, is TurboGears. Turbo uh, this one is more... Django is, is really one in all, so you don't need external tools to make it work. Turbo Gears, on the other hand, you have you need some tools to make it work, and it uses SQL Alchemy. So, and this is an SQL toolkit, which is actually an object relational mapper, and um, I'm trying hard to make it work, connect to Python with uh, SQL Alchemy. So, I think I still have to do some ten unit tests that fail, but I'm getting there. And there is already a backend available for connected Python inside the mainline um, source code. So I guess the next release will, will have connected Python uh, built in, backend built in. So that's pretty cool. So that's, uh, that will be the first major project who is actually uh, shipping something that can connect with connected Python. It already supports MySQL DB and RSQL as well. So, so you have a choice there. This is also the tool which I'm using uh, to debug um, Connected Python with all the units tests going through. So this is very helpful. Uh, one thing I used a lot in my previous work was Twisted. Um, this one comes with ADB API and it uses MySQL to, be, uh, to connect to MySQL. It's it's event-driven, so it's, it's trying to, uh, to do some, some, some kind of callback system with MySQL server. It works pretty well. It doesn't work yet with connected Python, so Aiden have, didn't even try it. Uh, so that's something we have to still work on. 
So those three frameworks would help uh, skill alchemy as well. Very important. Um, is somebody else using a different framework, uh, web framework or something like that? Python. Yeah, so. Yeah, but something else? No. Oh. No. Okay. Um, this would be. Yeah, I'm going to switch now to the, to the source code of Native Python because I want to show a bit how it works, how it goes. Big enough, right? Um, just going small example of, of how to. Um, this is the, one of the examples in the source code um, where I'm just inserting Unicode data in, inside my SQL server. It's pretty basic. You just open a connection with configuration. The configuration is defined here. So I'm using UTF 8. I'm turning on the Unicode. And I'm opening in a cursor. And this is the, the Unicode I'm going to insert. It's all statements going through. So here, for example, we uh, create a table. So we just uh, execute the statement where you do create table on this cursor. Insert statement. If I'm going to fast, just yell. Quick question. Uh, on the insert statement, you have the percent s values. Do you need a quote around that, or? Yeah. Um, do you need Do you need quoting inside of the insert statement? No, you don't need. You should never quote anything there. What if you have a a string with yes. spaces in there? So, um, as you see here, is it highlighting? Yes. Um, you have to do, you have to let the connector, uh, the driver, do the quoting for you. So in this case, connected Python is expect expecting this um, this um, this S. Um, how you call it again? Sorry, the format, and it will figure out its string, so it will do the quoting for you. So this is. You, give, you make the string, the insert string like this, and you pass on the data in the second argument of the, in, of the execute statement, of the execute function. You should never, ever do this. One second. Let's walk to the side. Okay. Uh, so I guess lots of people will do this. That's not how you should do it. You need to let the connect the, the driver put it yourself. So the foo, the, 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 the string, has to be in a variable and it will be here. So what is going on actually? It should be this. There. Connected Python, for example, will automatically put quotes around the value doing the insert statement. That's actually a um, question that pops up everywhere all the time. I, I mean, I was using MySQL DB, and uh, I don't know what version I'm using, but uh, 2.3.4, I think, MySQL. Uh, but it wasn't. I tried to do insert, and I tried to put in a string with space, and it would just say, you know, it would take the first part of the string and put that one in. It only worked with this code. Uh, okay. Is it my old? Is it? Older version I'm using is that the reason? Or? Um, no, it sounds that you do something wrong there. But um, what well, you should not use those versions. That's definitely. Thing. But uh, um, no, you should do it like this. Like I'm showing. That's the only way. Also, MySQLDB. This is um, this is actually defined in the 
uh, database at um, API, Python API. So you have, they describe how to do that, so, um, yeah. And when you say we should do it like that, is is because of security or SQL inject? So why? I mean, it works uh, if I do the quotes myself. Yes, it works when you do the quotes yourself. Um, but the drivers have this built in, and um, it it it's, does the job probably better than you. So it's a performance issue, not a security one. No, oh, it's not a performance issue. It's it's yeah. Well, it can be both. Yeah, uh, you can do you can do whatever you want, but this is the. Yeah. This but is the why do you proper proper Why do you think? Why do you say this is the proper way? What, what's the reasoning why it is proper? Yeah. I'm trying to find out an example where it would fail. But, uh, well, null values uh, also. I think uh, look, null none is converted automatically, right? I mean, if you're selecting a null column and then putting it in. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's an example. Good, that's yeah. a good example. Also, if you uh, there's a performance implication if you. Uh, if you put your values too much and you're inserting hints and things like that and you're surrounding them with quotes, uh, the server has to do more work for that. Um, whereas the, the thing will get that right every time because it actually compares it against the column type. Um, and you will have a harder time in catching that you're over quoting. Um, yeah. And then also sequence it. So look at this look at this example. This is much easier. I mean if you have to quote yourself you know, you have to figure out, oh, five is, a, is an integer, I'm not good. That's a string, I'm putting quotes around it. And that's none, so maybe I put no there. That's, you know, weird. So if you put, very easy, just put three of them, and you let the driver figure it out, it's cleaner. And you can also define the insert statements very nicely as well. Yeah, there are a few reasons to do that. You can do both ways, but this is the preferred way, definitely. Um, I'm just going to show one more thing. It's not here. A question back, yes? Um, yeah, we do, uh, we do a lot of that much in uh, custom options for customers. My question is um, twofold. One, does it support uh, passing it in a dictionary? Inside the SQL um, string, rather. So Dictionary in what way? Sending or receiving? No, in, in terms of um, cursor.exe. So you're mentioning put oh. the, the, the template string in, and after that, fill the variables. Yeah. We do something similar, but we just don't use like blank percent s, and we'll add a new word. So you actually use blank percent, um, and I don't know what it is, the foo variable or whatever. And then SLN. Yeah. Pass the dictionary, so it's easier to read, uh, a large SQL statement. Yeah, but I'm, I'm getting that. No, that's it. That is possible. So I'm, I'm, we are supporting the, the uh, so the pie format and both. So you want to do it like this? One second. Bring back. So yes. Like this. So yes. Yeah. So that's that which is cool. Yeah. Is it is is it um, inspecting the object type under the covers and then using that to determine how to write the SQL statement? So it's if you give this uh, this dictionary like this here, it will detect it's a string. Okay. Yeah. If you can. Um, you give it a regular object. Or try to uh, you, can, you can just give it date time, for example, an object like that, yeah. and it will figure out is it date time. Does it? A nice example, for example, why why you should use this stuff. You give it date time, and the driver will automatically make a string out of it, which is compatible for MySQL. Will, will it also work well for, uh, for a regular object? So if I just create a random object, how will it know how to write that into the... So what, if you create a random object? No. Right, so it, it won't use like the underscore wrap or whatever, but, and try, try to convert it. Yeah, so um, but the thing is, it's object-oriented, so you can just extend it. So, it's actually an interesting topic. So, 
this, uh, this is done in the conversion uh, module. So here you define, uh, this is similar to, to all the dri drivers, um, database drivers, they all use the same mechanism. Also, for example, for Postgres or anything else, so they all do the same, the same way. Um, but here we define how um, Python types are converted to um, MySQL types. So like, you know, an int stays an int, um, a date, date time here, where's my cursor? Um, date time will be uh, a function call and it will convert the date time to, uh, to, MySQL, uh, to MySQL string, like date and, and, uh, and time afterwards. What you can do is um, uh, yeah, overload the object, it might be a bit hacking, but you can do something uh, like um, my object type and convert it, convert this object type to something useful. How much does it Yeah. It's, um, I actually haven't thought about that stuff. It's an interesting idea. Uh, I do have one, one last question about the monopolizer. Um, I'll oftentimes when you're debugging, it's nice to be able to see the naked SQL. Um, does this do that, or does it, can you only really see the template stream? Yeah, so can, can you do easily debugging in Python, for example? Um, not yet. Uh, and there was this bug report asking for this uh, to to uh, dump the you know the, all the SQL uh, SQL um, yeah, SQL statements to logs, for example. Um, we have to be careful that we don't you know put too much performance uh, loss in there. So we have to. It's already a bit slower, so we don't want to make it more slower. Yeah. So this is how how Python types are converted, and. This, this is actually the, the best reason why you should um, use these insert statements like this. Um, yeah. So conversion. The same way it goes around, you know, it's, it's what, whatever comes from MySQL, we convert to something that's Python. In teachers, become teachers again. Um, the time becomes a time, and date time gets converted to a date time. Python. So again, actually, you can, you know, based on the content of the data, you can also convert stuff. So you can extend it. It's good idea. Um, yeah. One thing I was also a few questions about that is that um, lots of people ask, oh, there's no data in my table, and I'm inserting, 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 there's nothing going in, going in. That's because they are on Windows, and my SQL server installs window on Windows with INDB enabled by default, so you have to commit the transactions. And, you know, lots of people just, it's, in my SQL, commit is still a bit unknown, apparently. So, so here's the commit. And I roll back the DB object. Okay, just do that. Question about yes. Commit. We just added a uh, first Python script. Uh, every time I selected uh, the value in the table, it would have cached it. Unless it committed, then it would show a new value, which is very weird. So if you, com um, if you write it and um, the value is not committed, no, so let's so I, I got an uh, empty heartbeat running from the master. So the value in that table is always changing every second. But if I select from it with Python, it would show the current timestamp. And if I in my loop, if I select it again, it would show the same timestamp. And then I don't that's that's a repeatable read. I think that's a transaction level you have to change that. Oh, so because once I once I did a commit, then then when I select it, then I notice that the value yeah. is the, the, uh, this has nothing to do with Python. This would it will happen the same anywhere else. So if you read the value from your table and you read it again, although it's actually changed in MySQL server, um, it might happen if you have the same value again, so you have to check that in the settings. Yeah. Okay, this was MySQL, right? Okay. I 
Hello, I'm Jeff Hill. 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 Hello, I'm
why I'm saying that you should use Unicode is because Python is moving to Unicode, Python 3. And um, that's why I'm, I'm pushing this, well, I'm pushing but advising. Um, no, I cannot imagine, I cannot. The character sets are always a pain, everywhere, in, in any, any language. And uh, even on the, on the console, um, you should insert it correctly or, yeah. And UTF-8 doesn't, uh, is, is UTF-8 the version of Unicode where seven bits is, uh, characters are stored like one bit and others are a uh, byte and others are stored yeah. like two? So you don't really lose anything more than you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, good. And, and my scroll also supports only three bytes. So still. Um, but like most texts that are seven bit will uh, store as one byte. Uh, yeah, but that works in the code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's compatible. Okay. I was hoping for the. I heard that somebody was going to ask me lots of questions. It's apparently not here. Just okay. <laughs> Have you tried any? Uh, just in time compilers to see if that increases the speed. Ah. Like doing like your inserts, if you do like a thousand inserts. Uh, so to optimize Python code and then compiling it and stuff. No, I haven't tried it. Um, the reason is because I'm focusing focusing on, on making it simple to use, and, and that's the main reason why I have put Python. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, I'm using it because I can just make a script and to work on machines for testing support cases and uh, verifying bugs, for example. So I don't have to do it in C. Um, yeah, compiling might be a good way to do uh, some tests there. I also haven't seen any performance gain in Python 3 yet. Yeah? Do you have any profiles to find where your current game points are? So that, if I did profiles already, I do. Um, but I'm a bit new to that stuff, so but I'm doing that, yes. And I'm doing that with the um, unit tests of other projects, just to see where the bottlenecks are and, and there's too much function calls to one. I already fixed a few things that were really horrible. You know, stuff I did there. Was weird. <laughs> I've found that the type conversion is really expensive. I'm sorry. I, I personally found that the type conversion is really expensive. It's, um, like I said, I, have, I still have to learn lots of profiling in Python. And um, I, I hope somebody will do it for me in Python. So <laughs> then uh, point me out to, to there it is. But it, I fixed a lot of stuff already. And um, it, it performed much, much better right now. So, um, do you want me to say something more? Oh, I also, also experiment actually, my own implementation. Um, like MySQL would be an RSQL. It was actually my first attempt to just use the MySQL client. I was hoping to put this also in connect to Python, but I ditched the idea. I will leave that to the other projects to use the MySQL client and only do pure Python. I'm not going to do much too much more there. Um, and you might be called, call me crazy, but I also think about implementing the MySQL cluster protocol in pure Python. But um, yeah. Do it. <laughs> I think uh, I'll teach my kids to do that. I'm going to take one. Okay. Um, is there anything else I have to say? Yeah, about Python 3 maybe. Um, on free notes, uh, on the Python channel, they say, yeah, don't do Python now, Python 3 now because it's not ready yet. And, you know, these things. I don't believe in that. Um, if we, if we still wait and wait to, to make our modules not ready for Python 3 and we have to wait for the Python guys to actually deliver, we will never do it, so we're going to be late. So that's why I've now put Python 3 already in. Even though it might change later a bit, um, I'm not waiting and, and, and seeing. There are lots of people out there trying Python 3 and connected Python makes it possible to connect to MySQL. The files are going to be available somewhere? 
Um, you can enter Python. Ah, oh, the, the presentation. Oh. Yeah. Yes, it should be uploaded to the, to the website. So I hope this evening, but I'm thinking I'm going to crash uh, in my bed. Um, so probably next next day, so tomorrow. It's going to be a handout, so maybe it's not, but a handout. Uh, yeah. So if there's any more questions, uh, you can find me walking around in the conference. Um, so we're a bit more awake than you now. Uh, I'd just like to make a comment. I've been working with Python for a few years, and it's my favorite programming language. Yeah. And if I would have had to guess what the benchmark would be for an application like this that you've written, I would have expected a lot greater than just a two times slower than what it would be in, in written and pure C. I would have expected around 10 okay. times, five to 10 times. So I'm, I'm really encouraged to hear that it's only twice as slow. Is, I would expect much worse than that. Yeah, so you expect worse for performance from, from pure Python. Of course, this is my you know, first benchmark, so I'm checking it out uh, to see if there's a regression or not. That's why I'm doing that. So. But actually, I was surprised as well to see that. Maybe in, in certain other um, uh, ways of doing the transactions will be um, less performant. Mm -hmm. I've seen our SQL and MySQL DB, like our SQL should be faster, but sometimes it's slower than MySQL DB, and sometimes it's the other way around. It's very strange what happens there. So it's not definite. mistake I made in the to Python, for example, was uh, I had to split up string. I was just copying, you know, uh, take part of the string and copy it in another variable. This is always a copy. So I was just splitting up string, huge strings. It was a pretty performance problem. So I then I just to, 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 did it differently. It was a very nice thing to, to, to learn. Uh, but there are probably more of these little things. I also had every protocol thing was its own class. And I found that really bad. You know, pure object oriented, you should do that you know, to, to make it more external and all those things, but I don't think the protocol will change that much. So I revert it and put it in one class. And then the function calls were like dropping. Yeah, great. So that was a good move. So I put everything in one class again, just function calls in between. And that's how I'm now optimizing. I'm actually, that was a bit of the Python philosophy. You just make it work first, and then you optimize it later. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm now doing. I'm, I'm very happy with Python. And I hope I, we can do this uh, disconnected Python longer and, and stronger. It sounds like an other side, side website. Okay. Anyway, so this was the talk. Um, it's 4 o'clock now. So, if you have questions, just email me. It's still at sun.com. Uh, so, thank you.